My name is uh, David Casaleggio. I've been uh, dealing with uh, democratic processes online for a few years now, uh, around 15 years. Uh, we've uh, been uh, dealing uh, uh, with technology in general, with uh, Casaleggio Sociati, which is my consultancy company, uh, where we understand how technology impacts on society and on business and on uh, with Rousseau, which it was the, the platform that was uh, received the prize as the best uh, platform in the world for participation with the impact category. And today I'm dealing with uh, a new project called Camelot, Camelot.vote that uh, allows every organization to vote within itself and to do assemblies, etc. Uh, well, technology has always shaped our society. Uh, the rights and duties that we have today have always been uh, derived by new technology that has arrived. Uh, and we've been using new technology, so we have new rights and we have new duties. This is the reason uh, for which, for example, today we uh, pretend to have, well, we want to have uh, uh, free water. Uh, that's uh, taken by uh, Roman aqueducts. Uh, Roman aqueducts allow us to have free water, so we, pr we want to have the right to have free water. Uh, we want to have a pension uh, that was invented in 1800 just because we had the possibility of living uh, a life longer than the life we could dedicate to work. Uh, we, uh, we, we have uh, a territory of the state that is in the waters too, in the sea, and that's just around 1700 where uh, we had the cannons that could defend uh, the water, so three miles out from, uh, from the territory of the state, that was the new territory of the state. So every time we have new technology, we have new rights and new duties that uh, come around. It's not just because we've become more uh, intelligent or conscious of some rights that uh, these rights appear. It's because we have new technology and this allows us to have new rights and to have new duties also. Uh, that is the reason for which today, with the internet, we have new rights and duties. And we've identified, uh, with the work we did with Rousseau Academy, uh, 12 main new rights that today we, uh, we have to deal with. And many of these are directly uh, co uh, connected to the digital democracy uh, processes that we have uh, today and that we are allowed to participate in all the organization of, well, at least more than allowed, we can participate in the organization, in the proposition, in the voting for people uh, within those organization, maybe doing a recall uh, for those people that we've elected, uh, proposing things that uh, we can uh, discuss in those organizations. Today, it's possible. Uh, so now we are passing through this uh, uh, this process of it's possible because the technology allows us to do it so we are now pretending we want well sorry pretending is the Italian word uh, we, we are now wanting these rights to be available not only on a political uh, level but also on all the organizations we are part of so maybe our scuba diving club our a school, a, a place where we work, wherever we are part of our, uh, our organization. Today it's possible for us to participate in many ways. So we are now starting to ask uh, for the fact that we, that should be a right of participation. That is the new thing that is now happening in uh, uh, the democratic participation with digital tools. Uh, today, technology can solve all the issues that uh, are tied to digital participation, democratic participation online. But often we need to stitch together the tools that we find online. So if we need to uh, call the people to an assembly, we might use a, a tool. If we have to get people uh, knowing what the assembly is about, we might send them via email. Uh, with, uh, if we want to get people participating in video, we might use 
uh, video conferencing tool. If we want to get people voting, we might use a system to get them to vote and uh, to verbalize what's uh, happened. We might use uh, an, an AI system that uh, verbalizes everything that uh, we've uh, talked about. Uh, we need to stitch together all, this, uh, uh, all these tools. That's the objective we had uh, with uh, uh, Camelot, uh, uh, with offering one only tool that allows you to do everything you need to, to do an, an online assembly. I think that is the main objective today, having one tool that uh, can give you everything you need uh, to give uh, a participation experience democratic participation experience online. Uh, today, the main issue is not technology though, because there are some tools available online, you can stitch them together or you can use Camelot, uh, but uh, the main issue is what I call the plateau effect. Uh, when uh, Plato uh, went to Syracuse, that's 400 before Christ, uh, in the Syracuse theatre and he saw people applauding uh, to the uh, to the show that was going on, he was scandalized. He thought these people can't decide if a show is good or not. They can't applaud uh, to say if the show has been done properly. It's only the intelligentsia that can uh, decide that. And that is probably the the first uh, um, uh, thing that we find in books. Uh, he actually talked about this as the theatocracy in the, the, the democracy of the theatre. Uh, this is not possible for him on his side uh, because that was a choice uh, that only the intelligentsia, only the, the people who had studied could, uh, uh, could take. And today we have many uh, phenomena that are similar to that, where all the history is full of phenomena of this, uh, of this type. So we need to get people uh, knowing that everyone can participate in decisions that uh, uh, will affect them. So you don't need to be a nuclear scientist uh, to decide if nuclear power should be used in our state because you should be able to understand all the risks and all the benefits that that technology will uh, will tie will uh, will uh, bring and then decide in uh, in a general way so it's not just the nuclear sciences that, that should be deciding on that and i think that is the main issue uh, today that uh, we need to solve we need to allow people to participate every time it's possible for them to do to to be able to participate the second issue is if these decisions if these process of participation uh, are going to be compulsory uh, for the decision, uh, for the decision uh, taken by these process. And I think that is one of the main things to look out for, uh, because today we have many uh, uh, participation, okay, let's participate online, they discuss this thing, let's uh, do this uh, uh, wonderful uh, thing that part gets everyone uh, participating together, but people won't participate the second time if that is not compulsory if the decision taken on that process will not be compulsory for the people having to do that thing. If I discuss uh, things uh, and then, uh, uh, for example, Iceland is a good example of that. They had a perfect uh, 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 participation process in the writing of the new constitution and then the new parliament was elected and they said, okay, we are the representatives and that's, uh, and that's uh, something of the past. So, nothing of that will be done. So that is one of the thousands of examples that uh, uh, we have today of participation and disillusion. We don't have to create uh, participation processes that uh, uh, create disillusion. We have to create participation processes only if they create a compulsory decision in the end. The tool that we use to participate to vote online can actually uh, create a new, neutral playground and that I think should be the objective. So for example, if you have a, a set of choices, uh, these might be ordered in, uh, in a random way, so not to, uh, to have more on the first choice and not on the tenth choice that, uh, that you propose and uh, you must create uh, a, a playground uh, the, where you have information on all the 
uh, options possible. So you need to be um, educated on the consequences of those choices. And this is something that the tool itself can do. And it's important for the tool to have all these uh, things that can be integrated within the tool itself. Uh, I, I have an example uh, on 2014 where, when we did uh, um, a major uh, vote for the people that should have gone to European Parliament. We then elected uh, 17 European Parliament uh, parliamentarians at the time, so uh, a, a good share of the, of the European Parliament for the Italian part. Uh, in that case, we had uh, an order, alphabetical order. So what happened? In the end, we had MP, MPs in, Europe, in the European Parliament that begin with A, B and C and Z. Uh, so all, if you go and see the, the people actually elected in the end of this process that we had, we started off with 5,000 people with all the different uh, letters start, starting with their surname. Uh, in the end, we had only people with A, B and C and Z. Uh, so the next time round, we actually created a system that was random based, uh, presenting uh, the, the options uh, to, to be voted and a merit system. We had nine merits uh, that uh, people could have based on the CV, based on the participation within the organization, based on uh, online courses that they could do and etc. And this uh, mixed system based on the merit system and random uh, organization was actually a much better system that uh, presented uh, the candidates in a much better way. So this is just an example that had that has had a, a natural big impact on uh, European Parliament uh, in the past uh, that uh, actually can give a big change just on the tool side. On the other side, I think one of the best uh, uh, things that you can have in place is uh, uh, to avoid conflict of interest. If you have a commission, if you have people, if you have an organization that is dealing with the rules, with the uh, general organization of uh, the, um, the voting system that is directly involved, that is maybe a direct candidate uh, involved or is paid by one of the candidates that uh, is involved in the system, that is a big risk. Because whatever rules, whatever system, whatever things you put in place, uh, you might find that uh, the organization that is uh, creating this uh, has a direct conflict uh, of interest with the person that then will be elected or the uh, topic that uh, will be uh, taken forward. So that is absolutely one of the things that need to be focused before putting in place uh, a participation process. Uh, well, there's many features uh, that um, uh, it should have, uh, uh, a digital participation platform should have. Um, but I think going back to the uh, digital rights that I was talking about before, uh, there's three main rights that should be respected. There are the three main digital rights uh, that we have identified. Uh, one is digital identity. It should be, uh, anyone should be able to demonstrate their identity or their possibility of voting. So if I'm voting for a town, I should be able to uh, demonstrate my, my uh, living in that town. If I'm a, a member of my uh, scuba diving team, I should be able to demonstrate my um, membership, uh, etc. That is one of the main points. Uh, the platform should be uh, able to identify these characteristics of the people and should put out systems that allow the people to uh, demonstrate these uh, uh, characteristics of uh, being able to participate. The second is digital education. I, uh, every person should be able to understand the tool. It should not be uh, complicated. Also, the, the system uh, in uh, analyzing, for example, the votes that uh, uh, are acquired should be very simple to, to understand. That's, for example, one of the main uh, uh, problems of the quadratic voting, for example. Um, uh, so you should have simple things out 
and you should have the uh, possibility of understanding things. So uh, uh, education on how the system works and education on the options, on the questions, on the process of what's going to happen after uh, my decision on, uh, on the platform. Uh, third uh, point, uh, which is the main one of the three main rights is accessibility. Uh, the accessibility should be easy for, for everyone to participate in these, uh, uh, in these votes, in these assemblies. So, for example, with Camelot, we, uh, we create uh, uh, also uh, hybrid assemblies. So, if someone doesn't know anything about digital, they can participate physically uh, and they can e uh, express their vote physically. Uh, and then this can be uh, acquired by the digital platform. Uh, so these are the three main rights and I think these are the three main things any platform should focus on. Then there's a lot of other things, other features, but I, we don't have time today to go into all of them.